Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another Quran and Coffee Live. Inshallah, today we're going to talk about something exciting. We're talking about um, self-compassion, inshallah, in the Quran. And I think that's like a topic that uh, I've been waiting to talk about. Because subhanAllah, I think uh, we can all use some self-compassion in the Quran in our lives. And I think the best compassion we can get and the best uh, self-worth we can find is in, in knowing you know, our purpose in life and knowing our creator, um, the fashioner of each one of our hearts. So inshallah, we'll have inshallah ragad with us today and we'll talk. So open your Quran to 2.286. It's the last verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? I'm not like the blue, like the ocean. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Good, good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So sorry, everyone. We, I know we missed last week, um, but we kind of covered self-compassion last week with Zirqa. Alhamdulillah. For those who were able to catch it. And today, where it's another beautiful verse that um, I guess it's more common to everyone, right? Because um, this is a, a verse that's actually in our adhkar. So it was recommended by the Prophet ﷺ to read uh, this verse every to start our day with it and end our day with it. Hello. Isn't it amazing that's like a verse of self-compassion and <laughs> it's like start your day. It is. <laughs> it's it's so funny cuz it it kind of just hit me, right? A couple days I was listening to it in the car and I was like I can't believe I've been reading these verses <laughs> for most of my life and it just and mashallah you did you guys you and Deqa uh, may Allah reward you. you you did a beautiful job last week with talking about self-compassion. Those verses that you covered last week were also very beautiful. So yeah. thank you. Inshallah. Yeah. So this is two two eighty six. Um, it's pinned at the top. Uh, can you see it, Ragad, on on your end, like on the on my title? I have it uh, written. Sorry, I'm not. Uh, let me know. IG if, if not, I'll I'll just pin it for. It's two two eighty six. Amara just said it. Yeah, Amara yeah. just pinned it. Okay, there we go. I pinned it just in case. Inshallah. All right. So I'll read the verse and then we can go into it, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. La yukallifullahu nafsan illa usaha. Laha ma kasabat wa alayha maktasabat. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحانك you want to do the translation, Shala? Can you guys hear me? Because I can't see Dalad anymore. Okay, I think we'll see Are you guys, were, did you guys hear the verse? I don't know, I lost everyone. <laughs> Let me know if you guys heard the verse, inshallah. Okay, so we'll wait for Ragad to come back in. I think she um, lost the connection. But um, I'll go ahead and translate until um, until she comes back on, inshallah. I'm guessing she lost connection. All right. Um, so here it says, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not uh, put more on a soul more than what it can bear and I think we've we've probably heard this a lot like Allah doesn't give you more than what you can bear and I think people say this statement a lot like whenever somebody's going through something it's like this 
reaffirmation like remember Allah is with you and you, you're not getting more than what you can handle and then it says um, all good will be for its benefit all evil will be its, its own loss and here it's like a an affirmation of accountability so first it's like you're not getting more than what you can handle and then the next statement is kind of like building accountability and then now here is the dua the first dua of this um uh, verse رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنَّ نَسِينَا وَخْطَأْنَا Ya Allah, do not hold us accountable if we um, or when we forget and when we make mistakes. And this is one of my favorite statements of this particular verse. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already gifting you with the permission to be human. Like Allah is already permitting you to be human by making mistakes. That's just a part of who you are. You are somebody who is going to make mistakes you are going to forget maybe over and over again right like maybe you'll make the same mistake over and over again and that doesn't detach you from Allah because you're human you're human at the end of the day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hold us to perfection and I think it's us humans who hold perfection on ourselves that we're the ones who um, put that on ourselves maybe because of the way we're taught maybe it's society etc but the point is here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like Straight up telling us that you make the dua, us as humans make the dua, Ya Allah, do not, you know, hold us accountable when we make mistakes or when we uh, forget because it's bound to happen. And here's Raghad, inshallah. She'll come in. Um, so, this is such a beautiful way to start our days, like the Prophet Hassan recommended. Um, you're back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I couldn't see you, and then my phone froze. And- no, no, you're okay. You're Sorry okay. about that. Alhamdulillah. So I translated the verse and we, let's go. Let's just dive into it together, inshallah. <laughs> I missed what you said. I have to hear what you said. <laughs> well, I, was, I was just saying that like, uh, to, to me, yeah, if you break it up like the way it started, like, the first thing is like um, an affirmation to know that whatever you're going through is not more than what you can handle, right? So like that's the first mm. one. And then the second mm. one is accountability. Right, mm-hmm. like you're you're accounted for what you do, right? So like it's um, almost like brings you to mindfulness. Be mindful of what you're doing, right? Yes. And then the the third part here is actually my favorite part of the verse is, Rabbana la tu'akhidna nasina akhtana. Ya Allah, do not hold us accountable when we forget or when we make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And that's my favorite part because Allah here is like gifting us with the permission to be human. Right, mm. and to not be perfect, and I think mm. I was I was just saying like before you came on that like I think we do that to we put that on ourselves and we put that to people that on people that like you're not good unless you're not making mistakes, which is a false statement because Allah is here telling us you're human, right? And mm. that's why He's gifting us with a dua that's saying Ya Allah, when we forget or make mistakes, don't hold us accountable. Why? Because we're bound to do that. <laughs> Like we're bound to, to follow. Subhanallah. Yeah. It it totally blows. I'm glad you recapped. I'm sorry, everyone, that I froze. But it totally blows my mind away that you just, you categorized the verses into the three elements of self-compassion found in the research. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a geek. I'm a researcher. So the research plays in. It just comes in, okay? I can't help it. You're good. It's just part of who I am. But... But no, really, what you just described, the three parts, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa rasulillah. Um, according to the lead researcher, the guru, the self-compassion guru, um, her name is um, Kristen Neff. She's a Dr. Kristen Neff. She's out of Berkeley. She, she describes exactly, the Quran describes exactly, the three elements <laughs> that, that you talked about. That first part about, like, God's never going to give you more that you can handle. So there's these th- these three parts, and I feel like that first part of it is about self-kindness that um, I'm going through something hard right now, right? I'm going through something difficult. This is a difficult moment. But knowing that I can I can handle it because I won't be given more than I can handle. SubhanAllah. Wow, she says that. Um, no, she didn't say that. <laughs> but but she talks about no no but she talks about self kindness, right? This is the first element of self compassion, right? You Quranified it. Right? He said you just Quranified self compassion. Right? That 
so this, this idea of self-kindness versus self-judgment is that I'm going through something hard right now, but I know that God can't, I know that God won't place a burden on me more than I can handle. Yeah. Right. Um, and she, she expands on this idea of, sorry, I'm bringing up my notes um, of self-compassion, uh, self-kindness is that um, it's exactly, it's exactly what you were saying that um, we're bound to suffer. We're bound to fail. We're bound to feel um, like we're not doing enough sometimes. And to, for for Allah to validate those feelings and say, even when you feel all those things, you're not going to be given more than you can handle, right? Subhanallah, I think I think that's powerful. And then it's really interesting that you mentioned mindfulness in the second set of verses, right? Yeah. Because that's the second element in self-compassion wow. is to have this mindfulness versus um, over judgment. So, um, and you 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 covered mindfulness really well. Was it in Come as You Are? I can't remember now, <laughs> which, but you talked about, you talked about purposeful mindfulness. Can you talk about that a little bit? Purposeful mindfulness? Oh, uh, I think it's uh, relevant here. No, we, uh, yeah, I talked about that when I was talking about Tazkiyah uh, on my uh, yes. stories the other day. And for those who want to look at it, it's, it's in my story highlights. I think it's under success uh, mm. because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, um, aflaha man tazakka, right? Like the per mm. who's successful is the person who's, working on themselves in the way that you know you hear like purifying your heart right like that's a mm -hmm. type of tazkiyah that is tazkiyah you're purifying your heart the way you see things and for me how do you do that if you have to have purposeful mindfulness it's like mm. think of your day from the beginning like how are you using your senses right like what are you watching who are you talking to uh what are you listening to even what are you eating right? Like, what are you consuming? What are you being fed, right, from around you? Um, all these, uh, you know, uh, realities, but you becoming aware of it, that's a type yeah. of tazkiyah, right? That's a type of, you're, you're kind of like monitoring your heart. And that's the first way to, to tazkiyah, like to purifying the heart. Um, so purposeful mindfulness in the sense that you're like, um, actively engaged with your mind of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Mm. No, and, and I think that's powerful because basically uh, when they talk about self-compassion, the research they're saying mindfulness, which is what you just described it as, this idea of purposeful mindfulness, um, but not over-identifying. So for instance, not becoming so consumed in the negative emotions, so not, not suppressing them, but also not letting them overwhelm us, right? So when it comes to taskia or it comes to islah or it comes... Um, something difficult happened. I went through a difficult experience or, or, or I fell short of my expectations or fell short of my goals. So that mindfulness piece, I think, Spinal, you're talking about like really sitting or sitting and trying to be aware of what happened, yeah. but also, um, not beating ourselves up to the, to the extent that we feel that this, this isn't something I can overcome. Yeah. This isn't something I could ever actually rise from or, or come back from, right? SubhanAllah. And, um, and Deqa, uh, may Allah reward her, reminded me of this recently, that the, the harsher the season, the gentler we must become, right? Mm. And I think we're all going through a really difficult time right now with COVID. And I think we're almost a year into it. Like as a humanity, we're hitting like collective fatigue, you know, like we're just, we're tired, subhanAllah. And I think that's why self-compassion right now is more important than ever because, yes, we're, we're mindful that there are these um there, there's a lot of tough stuff going on, right? Whether it's missing family or just missing normal things that used to ha that you used to enjoy in life, or but subhanallah, I, I I appreciate the way that you talked about this. It's not mindfulness to the extent of letting the feeling overwhelm us. It's just mindfulness. It's purposeful, right? It serves a purpose, right? The purpose is to understand what happened, why I'm feeling this way, and what I can do with it to yeah. to move to rise to rise from it. Yeah. Does that make no, sense? No, that's that's beautiful. So like what what's the third one that she has? So so the third one is common humanity oh. versus isolation. So the first one self-kindness versus self-judgment. Basically like trying to be kind to yourself as opposed to really harshly self-criticizing like self-loathing like you mm. that stuff is not and and I think you talked about this 
um, recently, in, in the last live, probably on, on self, uh, last Friday, right? Um, and the second one, mindfulness versus over-identification. And the third one is common humanity versus isolation. So again, we're not alone, right? If, if you see the ayat, رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنَّ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا, right? Oh Allah, don't forgive us if we, we make mistakes, if we forget, right? It's not, Allah's, I feel like Allah's saying, you're not alone. Like when you mess up, you're not alone. But this is, this is a common condition for all humanity. We're all gonna, we're all gonna have times when, um, again, things don't go away, things don't go our way. And it, and they talk about how self-compassion involves recognizing that suffering is part of the shared human experience. SubhanAllah. And, and I don't know if you, if you see that in these verses. Again, it makes you feel like you're not alone, basically. You're, you're not alone in your suffering. SubhanAllah. No, I, I think it's, it's, it's nice how you mentioned the, the verb is like a, it's plural. And mm -hmm. um, even though it starts off, not, it doesn't start off that way. Like the yes. So it's self-accountability and then group yes. humanity. <laughs> yes. Right? Khalas, you need to write the book about self compassion in the Quran. Yalla, tfaddali. Go ahead. I told her, can you guys cheer, cheer her on? I told her she needs to be the first to write about self compassion in the Quran because there's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. But like, it's, it's the verse though. Like, like, if you look at the verse, subhanAllah, that like, mm. Allah is already setting the precedent straight that whatever you're given is not breaking you, it's growing. You. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Away, first part, right? Whatever you're going through is it's not breaking you, it's building you, right? Now, the second thing is you're you have self accountability, right? This is you. Thank you, Ragad. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> see, see, everybody's saying do it. Yes, inshallah. inshallah. Make dua. Inshallah, it'll happen. Inshallah. Inshallah. And then the second part, it's like because I think like there's this f fine line of like two extremes, right? Like so. Where it's like, okay, um, I can do whatever I want, right? And it's yeah. and right, and then you're not accountable anymore. And then it's like you're holding on to way too much. Like you're so hard on yourself, right? And Allah's like here, like bringing you in the middle, right? It's just like, yes. all, whatever you're going through, it's painful. Yes, it is. It's a lot. Yes, it might feel like it's breaking you, but it's not. Yeah. Like it grows. <coughs> right? so Allah's like, it's it's like compassion from Him. It's like rahma from him, the first yes. one. And then yes. the self-accountability piece is really important that it comes next, right? That before Allah gives you leeway to be forgetful and, and, and mess up a lot, which we are, right? It's like you're accountable, right? So like that makes yeah. you monitor yourself. That makes you stand stronger, right? And then yeah. after that, now we have this dua. And I love it how it's a dua, right? Like Allah mm. could have told us, you know, don't worry if you forget. But it's like, yeah. we get to make this dua. Like, it's a gift, mm. which is like, we mm. get to say, and it's a, it's a divine dua. Allah gave us this dua, right? It's like, it's in the Quran. Mm. And mm. Allah, the Prophet Allah told us to, to start That's our day with it and end our day with it. Like, imagine yeah, really embodying this every single day and night. It's like, you feel so much lighter, right? It's like... You know, it's you know the Prophet said, knew how much baggage we were gonna carry ourselves, right? And it's just like you don't have to carry this, right? And we're gifted with ending our day with this. Like, Ya Allah, do not hold us accountable when we're making mistakes, when we're forgetting, because that's bound to happen. You're human. But then it says, yeah. Ya Allah, do not place a burden on us like you did with those before us. And then the next one, Rabbana. وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَغْتَنَا بِهِ Ya Allah, do not burden us with what we cannot bear. You know what's interesting mm. about this part here is that Allah already said that He's not going to give us more than we can bear, right? Mm. But now we're asking Allah, do not put on us more than what we can bear. Mm. But to me, it's like, first of all, I think as humans, it's so hard for us to understand that first concept, right? That we get to make dua with that concept again. Right in the same yeah, but then yeah, also Allah. I think sometimes the reality is even when we know this statement لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها that Allah isn't going to give you more than what you can handle even with us knowing that the reality is sometimes we're going to feel like what 
we're going through is more than what we can handle. Yeah. You're going to feel like that. And that's mm. normal. Mm. And that's why you have this dua. Ya Allah, like, when you feel like that, make this dua. Like, Ya Allah, don't give me more than what I can handle. Right? And mm. it's such a beautiful dua because, like, you're, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a, with a dua he gave you, mm. you know, mm. to, to not... Um, to not feel like this is too heavy to carry. And I remember, um, I think I told you, but I'll go ahead and tell everybody, like, I remember when I was pregnant with Maryam, my daughter, and, like, um, I didn't find out that she had this rare syndrome until she was, I was five months pregnant with her. So, you know, up until five months, I'm thinking it's a normal pregnancy. And then now we're, like, hit, like, okay, she only has one kidney, oh, she might be half paralyzed, or she might not survive, oh, wait, hold on, we don't even know if her heart is functioning right like it was just so many things like bam 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 right and they're like okay maybe do an abortion she's already like almost six months and i'm like wait hold on like what's going on and the first thing that came up to me was La right yeah, well, yeah. why was it familiar to me because we were saying it every day and night like i would hear my parents say a lot like you when it's a part of the god you, you know, the daily routine of what to say in the morning and night, it just, you know, Allah knows what we need, you know, in our struggles, in our everyday struggles. So, like, the first affirmation was, like, okay, whatever I'm going through, I can handle it. It's not more than I can handle. And I remember someone telling me, you should do an abortion because you can't handle it. I still remember mm -hmm. that line. And mm -hmm. I was just like, hold on, like, for me, it was just like, if, if I can't handle it, then why would God give it to me? that was like mm. my first thought like um mm. and for me like i think that's what just i held on to like this ayah like this verse like whatever i'm going through whatever allah SWT has written it's written because he knows what so it's not breaking me and, and, and in the beginning yes like you go through all these feelings like you know you know i never thought i would be a mom who had you know a rare child right who had a wheelchair who would have to convert their van right all these things that you go through all these like emotions right and then mm. subhanallah like once you go through it and then like allah teaches you your potential yeah, and your struggle like you know subhanallah like now we uh, alhamdulillah started a chapter for rare moms in charlotte i would have never done that if i didn't have a rare child you know what i'm saying so like it pushes mm. you to excel in a capacity that you never thought you could get to, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I think mm. having this mm. affirmation is like a really um, divine gift to hold on to. Like for anyone going through anything, like this is just me and my one issue that I was going through. Imagine if everybody with their struggles, like to hold on to something like this, right? And it's not, mm. it's not making you stagnant. It's actually the opposite. Right? It's actually empowering mm. you to to do what you can to, to mm. help yourself to, 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 mm. uh, and, and to know that you're not being carried alone. Like Allah is carrying you through it. SubhanAllah. Yeah. No, thank you. SubhanAllah. That's, that's powerful. And I think um, a, a friend recently, uh, she was going through some health challenges, you know, more than one health challenge at a time. And I, and I am, um, I said, that must have been really hard for you. And subhanAllah, she, she again mentioned this verse. She said, I was given, <sighs> she said, I was given good news mm. that God would not give me more than I can handle. Yeah. Literally, this exchange just happened yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, like to anyone like going through like health challenges, emotional challenges, psychological challenges, physical, financial, whatever it is, it's just like there's so much power in knowing that, like you said, you're you're carried. You don't have to carry it alone. And I think um, there's another verse. Uh, I don't know if they're together, but خُلِقَ um, الْإِنسَانُ Like the human being, we're, we're created with, with weaknesses. We're created with like fragility, right? This, this like dichotomy of like immense strength and immense resilience but also fragility like we're we're humans at the end of the day we're not we're not you know um we're not machines <laughs> we're not robots yeah. and allah says wallahu yuridu an yukhaffifa ankum right like and allah wants to lighten your burden like that to me is like 
imagine someone coming to you and saying let me take this off of you right let me literally like let the the bag of rocks that you and I shall always talk about yeah give me the bag of rocks put it down and let me carry you right like let me carry you and and i think it's really interesting that you mentioned that uh the, this idea of self compassion yeah self compassion is not self pity right self compassion is not like poor me i'm going to wallow in this mm-hmm. pity right no and mm-hmm. it, it's 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 really actually and again i t- i took a course that said self compassion is actually the key to more motivation mm-hmm. to more will power and to more well being mm-hmm. subhanallah so it's not it's not a kind of like a, a a free pass to just be like okay yeah i'm going through a hard time so i'm not going to do anything that's going to lift me out of my suffering yeah. no it's just it's it's really taking a minute to be kind to yourself to be mindful of what's happening and to remember that you're you're part of a common humanity where where we all where we where we all go through hard times yeah. so they they've actually said that um you can be more resilient because you bounce back if you have more self compassion you're able to bounce back more easily from setbacks and more likely to learn from your mistakes yeah. isn't that islah doesn't that spell out islah like isn't that what islah is to be able to bounce back to mm-hmm. you make you you make mistakes make istighfar you you bounce back and you you learn you you move on you try to grow you try to thrive mm-hmm. um yeah. i don't know and that's all what we're responsible for like here Allah is telling us yeah. you're not expected to be perfect you're expected to keep going like you know like this whole like progress over perfection thing right it's it's all over the quran like and even like um, i forgot who was yesterday oh i think it was in the live i was doing with uh, raisa um that subhanallah like um what the combination of belief and islah of like believing in Allah Taala and then the action of reforming and, and fixing and trying to be better right that combo is always coming together but i love the places where they come together as an exception for someone who fell into wrong and they want to be better right and allah is saying that you can be better all you have to do right the condition after major sins after hypocrisy right imagine something mm. the magnitude of that and then allah saying oh but you can just believe in islah i guess it's the same condition that he gives anybody who's a believer to begin with right whether it's a minor sin or a major sin like all you can do is work to be better and i think to me like it lifts so much baggage from within ourselves and our, and what we keep in mind of like no like i have to be this person right um when mm-hmm. the reality is you're never going to be that so like stop trying mm-hmm. right stop mm-hmm. trying to be that mm-hmm. just keep trying to islah to do islah to do the work that mm-hmm. you're trying to fix oh i think i have a gap here let me try to work on that oh okay i messed up mm-hmm. let me get back on on the road right it's like mm-hmm. this is my favorite mm-hmm. analogy that i always use uh, uh, but basically like in come as you are we mentioned we talk about this a lot that um Like imagine somebody who's on a highway driving and then they get a flat tire, right? And you know, so now they're on the side of the road, they're trying to fix their tire. People, the person driving, what are they going to do? They're always going to call someone or if they know how to change mm. themselves. Mean I should change. I should tell me how to change a tire whether I'm shallah I have. So one time shallah like but call someone or do it yourself, etc., right? And then you get back on the road. like nobody physically mm. stays there for days right you don't see that happen yes but, <laughs> but we do that spiritually we do that spiritually it's like we're driving mm. we're going we're fixing and then something happens and we're on the side of the road what do we do we're like oh we, we stay got, there got to the side of the road and we're like there like as if like we can't okay <laughs> allah telling us to slack to just work to fix is like Oh, I messed up. Let me fix this. Get back on the road. We yeah. ourselves, like we're our own roadblocks basically. We're our own roadblocks and I think I think self-compassion comes in really really um handy 
when you're going through something that you cannot control, I mean, we don't have control <laughs> over anything really, but I mean, like, like a health challenge, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, a, uh, with Maryam, may Allah bless her. Mm -hmm. Like with Islah, I feel like there is, there is something like, like for instance, yeah, I fell short of a certain expectation. Like you said, there's something that I can do about that. And, and yes, even when you're going through something beyond your control, there may be certain things that, that you can do, little things. But um, yeah, let's say someone is, is suddenly uh, stripped of their health, right? Just there's a crisis, there's a health crisis, and suddenly they can't do the things that they have always um, been doing, whether it's mothering or working or parenting or just working in the community, like being involved in the community, right? Suddenly, everything that you knew of yourself, everything that made up who you are as a person is stripped away because of a health crisis, let's say, or a financial crisis, or a, um, you know, you have to leave your home because of a, 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 a you know, a, a, a conflict. So suddenly it's like, I'm not, I don't have all the things that used to make me who I am. And maybe part of that is is kind of what you were saying with your life with Raisa, that we can't base our self-worth on all these external things um, because then when 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 something happens, right, when, when our health fails us or our relationships fail us or our, um, you know, work fails us, mm -hmm. then suddenly we feel like, we feel like we failed. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel self-compassion comes in. It's like, okay, wait, you're going through a hard time. There's, there's something going on for you right now. And like you said, that mindfulness, I think, redirects us to anchor ourselves anchor our self-worth, anchor our, um, our, our purpose, right? Mm. In God, right? To, to go back to that and say, like you said, and to remember that he is the all-merciful, he is the all-compassionate, and um, he knows, right? Like I, I, I shared this earlier um, uh, about Al-Basir, like he sees, he sees what you're going through when, when no one else sees it. He hears he hears your innermost um, cries when no one else hears them, right? And and he knows. And I think part of that that that's powerful to know that you're not alone in your suffering, right? That that you're not alone, and that it's um, and that you'll get through it, inshallah, with him. That you can get through it. Subhanallah. I think it's interesting that you said like I keep thinking about what you said about the the self pity, and like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think to me, like the reason self-compassion uh, builds you to like empowers you rather than puts, you know, pity and, and like, you know, feeling sorry for yourself in the sense where you're stagnant, but it's actually building you to do something, right? I think it's mm. like I'm thinking of um, the word rahm in Arabic, right? So like Allah is, rah is, is, rah is rahma with us, right? His um, compassion with us is equates to growth right because like mm. you know how Allah Ta'ala, you know it, it comes from the word rahim, like the womb <coughs> i learned this from arabic where the q online and I, michelle if you follow her she has you know she breaks down arabic root words which is really beautiful but um she was taught saying how like um the, the word rahim or mercy and compassion comes from the same root word of the womb and the womb takes mm. the seed from a place of potential to reality so it rahma automatically equates growth, right? Compassion mm -hmm. equates growth. So when Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet wa sallam, tell us to be compassionate within ourselves and with our communities, that means we're helping ourselves grow. So then mm -hmm. when we're compassionate with ourselves, we're already we're already just by saying that growing, right? Yes. Um Yes. And then also you might remind me, and I think we mentioned this a few weeks ago about the dua that, Ya Allah, bi rahmatika astaghith. Ya Allah, I ask you through your mercy. Again, now think of mercy as growth, right? And then you're asking, yes. aslih li. Yes. Ya Allah, like, fix all my, repair all, all of the things that I'm going through. Shatni kulla. Every affair I'm going through, Ya Allah, reform it for me. Through your mercy, yeah. that yes. grow and build, right? Yeah. So now you're yeah. seeing Salah, the uh, yeah. thing and, re and repairing and reforming, being better connected with compassion. 
Yes. Right? Yes. 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 Anla, I, I see the same thing here. And also I wanted to point point out how, you know, if you continue on, now it says Pardon us, forgive us, have mercy on us, have compassion on us. Right? Mm. So you're already mm. asking. Now you're asking for compassion after this whole verse in the beginning was like self-compassion, right? But yes. what, where are you getting your self-compassion from? From the root. From the root. From the most merciful, the most compassionate. And now you're specifically asking him for compassion and mercy. Right? Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. And then yes. it says, Anta Mawlana. You are our wali. Like you, all our affairs fall back to you. Like you're the one yeah. like running the show for us. Right? And we're, we're comfortable with that, ya Allah. Right? Like, we can't do this without you. Yes. Right? Anta Mawlana. Fansurna. Give us Nusra. And this word Nusra is like when you're, like, you know, there's a difference between Nusra and help. And Daqa taught me this. That, you know, sometimes people say Nusra is help. It is help. But it's like divine help when you're literally in the middle of the ocean. Right? You yeah, need Nusra. You don't need help. You know, you know, maybe I need help, like with my groceries. That's help. Right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when you need Nusra, like you're stuck and there's no way out, you need Nusra, right? You need divine yes. victory, right? So here we're, yes. we're, we're telling Allah, at the end of this verse, right? And to me, it's like, why this verse? Because like, you know, it's like we, we, put, we put everything we needed and now we're asking Allah, give us the Nusra. And sometimes mm -hmm. we think that we need to build muscle, physical muscle, to have Nusra, right? We mm. need to be, like, perfect to have Nusra, right? We need to keep running to have Nusra. But here, it's not and nothing like that. It's, there, it's more a mindset of, of self-compassion, of mindfulness, of being able to make mistakes, but then come back stronger. That's yeah. Nusra. That's what's giving wow. you victory, right? Like that's the, per that's the best preparation you can have, right? It's not the how much am I doing versus how compassionate am I with my doing and how, how much I'm allowing myself to make mistakes but then come back stronger because of those mis mistakes, right? <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> just had to see too much. I need like 10 hours to process what you just said. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it just made me think of that word when I said fansurna. And Divine know, victory. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. SubhanAllah. And like, I know like here it says fansurna to those, to those who deny faith. But to me, I feel like this word... Kafirin could be sometimes um, labeled in so many ways, right? But when, if you look at, again, root word, this is why root word is so beautiful in, 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 uh, in the Arabic language, is that like kufur is when you cover something, when you hide something, right? And um, even in the Quran, uh, a kafir in, in one surah is mentioned as a farmer because the farmer is covering mm. the seed, right? So, if Kathleen are people who are denying, maybe sometimes we deny some things, right? Mm. Mm. So, sometimes we deny our humanness. Yes. By expecting yes. perfection on ourselves. Yes. Right? And to me, this yeah. verse is helping you gain that victory against that self-sabotaging person inside of you. Right? Yes, 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 yes. It's giving you victory over your own self that's putting more on you than what Allah ever told you to. Right? Yeah, Allah. So it's powerful. Yeah. Allah. yeah. No, I, I, I think that's powerful because, like you said, like, <clears throat> who are we to deny our humanity? <laughs> like, and, and, and that's this, this is what it says here that yeah. self compassion is the ultimate self acceptance. Mm -hmm. It makes, compassion makes room for failure. It makes room for disappointment. And it makes room for imperfection. Yeah. 
clearing with compassion yeah. helps you feel nourished, held, and safe enough to let go. Wow. And again, if we Quranify this, who are you letting go to? Yeah. <laughs> to the mola who are you yeah. to the mola the one you're protecting friend the one who's like who are you being nourished by and who are you being held by and who are you being well. like kept together by like you know who's healing you and who's holding you and who's carrying you and who's believing in you when you don't believe in yourself mm-hmm. right and someone asked like having this current struggle and how do we not let it affect our self worth i hope like what samia just said mashallah about these that how all of this works to help give us this sort of divine intervention divine you know victory all, all of this work that we're doing in, in in the verses and and i think subhanallah we have examples of this in the seerah this isn't foreign like the prophet as salam when he lost his son ibrahim and the sahaba the companions saw him crying like you know, like well, why are you crying yeah. <laughs> right? and what did the prophet say as salam he said in the line la tadma the tear will the, the eyes will shed tears wa anna al-qalb la yahzan and and the heart is truly sad wa anna li firaqika ya ibrahim la mahzunun like truly to part with you oh ibrahim like mahzunun like he felt this deep grief mm. like the prophet felt deep grief you know he he went through a whole year of sadness when he lost you know his both his uncle and his wife at the same time but the the important part he says walakin la naqul but we don't say illa ma yarda Allah except what pleases Allah so i think we we've, we've talked about this a lot is that grief and gratitude can coexist right mm-hmm. it's okay if you're going through a hard time to realize that things are hard but that doesn't mean that we're not grateful right it doesn't mean just because i have self compassion and i'm sitting with my pain for a minute it doesn't mean that i've suddenly for, forgotten how how blessed and how um generous god has been with me right mm-hmm. these the, the 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 gratitude and the grief don't have to aren't mutually exclusive and again we see it with prophet yaqub yeah. with prophet yusuf you know inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ila allah like wa biyadat aynahum al huzn like he was so i i again the the, the whole surah as mashallah sam is doing a class on surah yusuf right now um i highly recommend you sign up inshallah for for future classes but the the whole surah um is basically like there's a hadith that if you read surah yusuf it brings relief to to anyone who feels sadness right there's so much trial and and again for the for the person that's asking maybe i don't know if you want to tackle that a little bit about um self-worth and a, a current struggle uh, you, about how hardships build us basically right they're not they're not meant to break us i don't know if you want to speak to that um i feel like it's it's like the perspective first of all i think it's okay to be in the unknown because i think mm. unknown is what scares people in the beginning and it's like mm. it's what gives you the anxiety like i don't know what's happening i don't know what's going to happen in the future like what is this doing to me like and it's okay to accept all those feelings i think sometimes we associate um like you said like i think you said it well like uh, you can't be grateful or have faith while you're grieving when you can right like mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. not know you can be grief struck right and still mm-hmm. have faith right because mm-hmm. it, and those emotions actually can bring you to a higher faith once used mm. in the right way mm-hmm. once channeled in the right way uh, but yeah prophet mm-hmm. yusuf's story is like um so much hardship but that hardship subhanallah was um a means to his elevation right like mm-hmm. again we mentioned like it it helps you find your own potential within your right like allah subhanahu let's say gives this person this <coughs> Let let's say you're 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 struck with a calamity all of a sudden right a hardship right and your focal point at that point is I'm breaking I can't handle this right and maybe we are like that in the beginning but then you know once you get to the phase of like acceptance okay what can I do with it what is this teaching me uh right once you go through that like grief process right and mm-hmm. now you're at the acceptance phase it's like <clears throat> now you're empowered to do something about it 
right? It's mm. like the sabr, we talk about it, so it's the sabr action plan, right? Like the mm. action plan of experience. What can I do to help me through the calamity? And sometimes the end place that you find yourself is like, whoa, I asked for this type of confidence. Mm. I asked for this. Like you were praying for whatever you got, but you got it in a way you never thought you'd get it. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that's the key to realize that you know our um, affairs are like you know when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us to to make this dua that Ya Allah do not leave me alone for the blink of an eye because I can't even blink my eye without you Ya Allah right like I'm mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. I can't even control my heart beating right now this is all Allah Subhanahu wa Taala right like. You know, I'm drinking coffee and it's, you know, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping me swallow the coffee. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't do anything on my own, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when we're going through hardships, we have to realize that, like, we get to fall back on the one who can make that hardship the means of elevation, right? And this is, all, mm-hmm. it starts off with with the, the mind shift that I'm, just this ayah, honestly, this, this verse that you're not alone, right? Ya Allah, mm. maulana, ya Allah, you're the one that we comfortably fall back on, right? Because you're the one who's teaching me that I can make a mistake and it can still be okay. Like, mm. I can make a hundred mistakes and Ya Allah, you still love me, right? Mm. Mm. When mm. essentially, like, our families might not do that for us, right? Mm. Nobody actually in humanity might want to see you for everything you are and still love you for it yeah allah ta'ala is here saying that i i'm carrying you with all your baggage right SubhanAllah. willingly and lovingly so let me and we let him by saying Anta maulana. Ya Allah, you're the maula that we're falling back on right and this is why knowing allah ta'ala is so key that's the first step to self-compassion someone asked if you want to be self-compassionate, get to know the source of compassion, right? Mm. That Allah mm. Taala give us His names, and Allah Taala, you know, the Quran is embedded with na- names of His here and there and there for a reason, right? Because Allah wants us to know, to know Him through those names, right? That like, that when yeah. you cannot be compassionate with yourself, you know that Allah is Al-Rahman, the All Compassionate, right? When you can't mm. forgive yourself, you know that Allah is Al-Ghaffar, the one who perpetually forgives because you're per- perpetually making mistakes, right? So like those mm. aims exist for us to be carried more than anything, Allah Alam. No, JazakAllah Khair. And, and, and that's why we started the series with talking about God's compassion, right? Mm. Like, um, and, and it's interesting, we talked briefly about this yesterday, the hadith that لا يؤمن أحدكم None of you truly believes until you love for your brother, until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Yeah. So th- this hadith assumes that you need to have some level of love and wanting of goodness for yourself to want it for other people, right? Yeah. To be able to love goodness for others, you need to love it for yourself too. Yeah. And then you pointed out something to me yesterday, if you want to. Um... No, no, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you do it. You'll say it better. No, I, I, I'm forgetting what I said, so please go ahead. <laughs> okay, no, I'm sure. It's just the iman, right? That it goes back to the faith, mm-hmm. right? That to, to have this love and care and kindness towards okay. yourself and love towards others, it needs to be anchored in our faith. It needs to be anchored in Ar-Rahman, the most compassionate, which is why we started the series with God's compassion yeah. and talked about the Prophet's compassion. Exactly. Yeah, so. yeah, because that that's the cycle, like, you get to be anchored in your faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That helps you know his mercy and his compassion for you. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. With all your flaws. And now, because of him, your belief in him, now you're self-compassionate with yourself. And you're accepting that, okay, I don't have to be perfect, but I can, I can keep going. I can still love myself even with my flaws because I'm working to be better and because I'm anchored in knowing him. And then yes. that helps you be compassionate with others, right? And now you're not expecting yes. people to be perfect, right? Because they're also a creation just as much as you are, right? And that's how we're like it, you know what I'm saying? The cycle can, can yeah. continues once we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And that's why I was saying like, that's the root. 
and all yeah. the uh, like yeah. someone asked what if grief and pain of a long standing situation leads to anger more specifically frustration at not seeing relief is this a sign that something needs rectifying or is it acceptable i'm going to tell you that you know allah alam it's i think it could be different answer for different people and this is why getting to know yourself through therapy is so important i mentioned this yesterday mm. that you know you know if you're going through a situation where you're trying to process which is beautiful like i love how you're asking this question and i think that's why therapists exist because they help us like uh a real um you know peel all the layers we have all these layers that we don't see that we don't even know existed right <coughs> and for me like that's what helped my faith what helped my faith wasn't me saying i want to know allah that's actually not how it happened for me personally for me it was like i'm going through <laughs> this and this and that and i cannot survive like this right and mm. that pulled me into therapy now therapy is mm. like whoa like i'm this and this and this and i need to work on this on this and this and then when i started doing that i was like oh my gosh now i'm seeing the um the flaws i had in my relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how i need that mm-hmm. needed work right i find that mm-hmm. i found that out through therapy who with the therapist who was non muslim actually right mm. so um i highly suggest like for anybody going through any like intense situation like that like the question asked is to know yourself right because it's going to be a different answer for a different person like maybe somebody is angry because uh they had unprocessed emotions in their childhood right maybe they went through something that was traumatic to them maybe there's a hundred things that could be going on that could be causing the anger and when you find that out it's so empowering for you mm-hmm. um Do you want to see the last comment there? Um uh, it just sounds like some sort of it, it's beyond the scope of this live but I think someone just needs to uh, maybe direct the sister to a crisis line perhaps. Um about suicide yeah subhanallah it's it's a mm-hmm. common um I saw I forgot the name but there was a um somebody had recently posted about this I'll I'll message you inshallah after. um or if you can dm me and i'll send you sources but yeah anybody going through that for sure like there's lifelines there's um alhamdulillah a lot of i feel like the community is is uh waking up to this because i think it's across the board like people are mm-hmm. unhappy with themselves especially like ragad mentioned like this is like this year has been crazy this year like you know people mm-hmm. stuck at home uh some people are in like you know abusive situations and they're stuck at home with this person etc So there is so much going on and I feel like um as a community to come together and inshallah to refer them and to be there for them inshallah I and mean, that's the best we can do. Mm. Oh, jazakallah khair. Thank you. And um there was just this really quick quote that I came across about grief and gratitude since we're talking about grief and gratitude that it says the work of the mature person is to carry grief in one hand and gratitude in the other. and to be stretched large by them mm-hmm. how much sorrow can i hold that's how much gratitude i can give that's really interesting wow that is interesting if i carry only grief i'll bend towards cynicism and despair and if i have only gratitude maybe i won't develop much compassion for other people's suffering It says grief keeps the heart fluid and soft which helps make compassion possible. Mm. Subhanallah. Grief keeps the heart fluid and soft which helps make compassion possible. And and I think again like the the soul needs to be taken in context of course if there's someone you know going through a crisis mode uh suicidal this is something that needs to be addressed right away or if it's something that's been if it's got, been going on for years that it's starting to impact your your quality of life and 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 your interactions so please take care of yourselves everyone okay <laughs> do what you need to do to take care of yourselves and um and uh and remember that you're not alone you know yeah. you're not alone inshallah uh, people are asking where that is from really 
I, it's just, it's a quote I found by someone somewhere called, but it's by Francis Ward Weller. Maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it up in my stories after. Okay. Inshallah. inshallah. I just, I found it somewhere. It was probably Facebook. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, thank you. But thank you. This has been, uh, this has been powerful. SubhanAllah, just to see how much self-compassion we have embedded in the Quran. And I don't know if you mentioned it at the beginning, but like you said, uh, these last few verses in Surah Al-Baqarah and Ayat um, Al-Kursi, uh, the Prophet ﷺ says, if you read them, like if I have the correct uh, hadith, like they're enough for you. They're basically like, they suffice you. They'll, take care of you do you, yeah. do you know what i'm talking about yeah that, kafata yeah. in arabic that's enough yes kafata yeah, yeah it's it's so inshallah maybe this is uh this is something that we can we can uh, start yeah. to do more of inshallah yeah inshallah. start your day and end your day with it i think it's the best affirmation to know what you're saying and to realize why allah wants it for us just to relieve ourselves from ourselves <laughs> basically yes and and to remember like it's so amazing what you said about the, the I'll just end with this sorry I know we're over we're going over time but this this formula that the prophet sallallahu said la yu'minu ahadukum hatta none of you truly believes until you love for your brother or you love for yourself again it's interesting this is like they talk about the triangle of of um compassion is that self compassion can't can't exist in isolation and compassion can't exist in isolation it's kind of like a triangle you need to have mm -hmm. self compassion you need to care for others which mm -hmm. is to love for your brother what you love for yourself and you need to receive support and and you're receiving that support again through divine nusra right through divine help mm -hmm. through um people around you who remind you of how much you're loved by allah through the quran subhanallah so inshallah mm -hmm. and remember you 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 it can't exist in isolation it's kind of like an ecosystem it's a social mentality that we have we balance self-compassion with caring with for others with receiving support inshallah thank you it looks like melissa listed sorry the the name of the author oh okay thank you thank you i'm sorry what were you gonna say um i was gonna say you know what you remind me of like again like prophet yusuf's story and we keep going back to him but it's just like um those circumstances, those tough situations um, softened him. Like, and you see that at the end of the story where he literally just is able to forgive his brothers on the fly like that, right? And he's yeah. Just, it's like, yeah. he doesn't even say, I forgive you. It's like, right? Yeah, Allah. There's nothing on you. Like, it's as if you, like, you're good. Like, oh, you're good. After all that, like, what? After these years? Like, you're good? And then even <laughs> he sees and his father, he's, um, and he's re reunited with them and he's telling them about his life. And he's saying like, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي That Allah's been good to me. Like I was literally, he was stripped away from his family. Thrown into prison, you know, you know, um, unjustly. Um, everything that happened, <laughs> all these things, right? Like <laughs> imagine all the trauma. He's like, Allah was good to me, right? Allah was good yeah. to me. And subhanAllah, like this is, to me, this is what being anchored in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means, that those trials mm -hmm. are, are um, building you, they're softening you, they're opening up your heart. Um, and then you also see his uh, relationship with others throughout the story, right, where he's good to people, right? right? Like yeah. you said this here in the yeah. quote, that like those tough situations soften us like nothing else. They're heart softeners. And if you imagine the Prophet Sallallahu life, That's who awesome. grew up, an orphan, right? Who was going from home to home, right? His grandfather died, now he's with his uncle, right? And then later on, his uncle passes away, right? Like this person was, you know, dealt with a lot of hardships growing up, but then he was the most compassionate of human beings. It's not, oh, yeah. it's not a coincidence, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think like, yeah. um, and, and even us going through hardship, and I think we mentioned this last time, that it helps people um realize their potential too right so mm, mm, people mm. go through something and then write books because of it right and they're they sh they're showing others that hey like you can go through it too right because i did mm. and and it becomes like a source of empowerment almost and i think mm. the best way to to do that is to know allah ta'ala and to be close to him through it and mm -hmm. for those who you know, don't have that mindset because, you know, maybe they're too far in, right? Or um, 
they're too detached from this concept of knowing Allah Taala. You know, it's okay to be there, and I think that I highly recommend, like we talked about, just therapy, getting help. You know, mm-hmm. because you don't have to come to it knowing Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? It's okay to not know, right? Because a lot of people like. They're suffering, right? And yeah. you can't yeah. take somebody who's suffering and just be like, oh, no, God. It's just like, wait, I'm suffering, right? So you have to address the suffering. Address the suffering for suffering, right? And that's why like therapy is essential. Like it's, you have to know yourself first, right? And when you know yourself, yeah. the more you know yourself, you can't detach yourself from your creator. So that will come with yeah. it. And, you know, therapy, you know, for those who... You know, a lot of people be like, I, I feel like think of therapy like, oh, no, 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 I don't need therapy. We all need therapy, right? Like, and, and I actually, when, when somebody tells me they're in therapy, I'm like, oh my gosh, I already love you. Like, because it's really empowering. Like, that's the, that's the best thing mm-hmm. you can do for yourself, for people mm-hmm. around you, for generations to come. Like, I think it was you who shared this with me that somebody had said, once, once a woman heals, she's healing generations to come. Right, she's not just healing herself. And I feel like that's so true, subhanAllah. And that to me is again back to islah, back to fixing, rectifying, <laughs> and reforming, right? And even in the dua, like we have this dua in the Quran, wa aslah li fi zuriyati. And yet Allah, heal me, rectify me <coughs> through my generations, right? Because mm-hmm. that's how much empowerment Allah is giving us that, like our own uh, work to reform and to be better is mm. making generations better because one yes. person stood up right and did better yes no subhanallah and, and and you had said this statement and it was powerful um once you can be you can discover mm. this isn't me samia said this i'm just <laughs> <laughs> and and you also told me you have to be to become yeah right you have to be to become and sometimes like you said the only place you can be and you can discover is in a very neutral, bias-free space like therapy, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're just you're just met at where you're at. It's a safe space. There's no judgment. There's no um, shame, right? There's no blame. No. <laughs> There's none of all the icky stuff that we feel, right? When we're like going over it ourselves, right? Yeah. You have this like compassionate presence, right? Like mm-hmm. someone who will just meet you where you're at and listen to you and and help you. So I think, I, I think that, that that's powerful, this idea of, of um, getting to know yourself. And you mentioned this in the live is that when you get to know yourself, you get to know Allah and then you, you can't detach yourself from his mercy. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I found that to be, I found that to be powerful. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for, um, no, for reminding us of that. Thank you. And, and, you know, I'm going to, I know keep going, but I'm going to end with this inshallah that like um, you said, you know, when we expose when we expose ourselves to Allah Ta'ala, you know, to our creator, we can never leave that position with humiliation, right? Mm. Unlike with people, like, no matter how close you are to someone, once you expose yourself to them, like, I feel this this way, and I know, I, I don't know how I'm feeling this way, right? You have this feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm exposing myself, I'm humiliating myself, right? But when you do that with Allah Ta'ala, it's mm. never humiliation. And I'll give you mm. the, the best example that I, that I find the Qur'an of, of this is 1923. Surah Maryam, mm. Maryam's story, right, where she tells mm. Allah Ta'ala, I wish I had died. Like literally, mm. imagine like the chosen woman for us, Maryam, Mary, right? And she's in the Qur'an mentioned like she's, Allah chose her above all women, right? Mm-hmm. And this chosen woman is saying, yeah, I wish I had died. Right? Yeah, Allah. And mm-hmm. the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses her with comfort and care and giving her water beneath her to comfort her, right? And he tells her, shake the palm tree. And you know what's really interesting, and for those who took the Surah Maryam class with me, is that when she utters these statements in the Quran in 1923, it says she came to the palm tree and she said, I wish mm. I died. Now, two verses mm. later, Allah tells her, shake the palm tree. Yeah, Allah. You, like, Maryam gets to shake her place of pain 
and produce yeah, fruit, fruit from that pain. So that pain, yeah. to me, pain builds purpose because of this one verse, like because of her story. That, and Allah is showing her that this pain isn't for nothing. Like your words yeah. aren't for nothing. And he teaches her how her words became a source of nourishment for her. She didn't want to be here, but Allah is like, your pain is going to nourish you. Just watch it, right? Right? Just yeah, Allah. keep going. And then look what she carries. Like Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus, right? The, the only yeah. prophet, the only man to ever be born without a father. Right? But it all started from her in the beginning, not wanting this. And she felt safe enough to expose those feelings to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and his divine reply to her, was to send her company, to send her mm. water, to build her, mm. right? To empower her, right? Mm. To nourish her. Like, I think it's just those alone that the, now that needs a book. You said you were mentioning a book. Like, to me, that just needs a book. You have many books to write, my dear. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> Keep the du'as coming, people, for Samia. To write all the books that she's meant to write, Inshallah. <laughs> oh. I miss Surat Maryam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Inshallah. Inshallah, if you offer it again, I highly recommend it. Surat Maryam was um, was life changing. Subhanallah, because uh, because yeah, it's it's there's there's all these prophets again. Like you could probably pull out so much self compassion, right? Like yeah. um, Prophet Zakaria really wanted a child, right? And he said, mm -hmm. I, I called out to Allah, like he really wanted a child, right? Like again, he went to Allah with how he was feeling. He yeah. sat with his feelings and he expressed yeah. them. Like you always tell us, like use your emotions yeah. to access Allah, right? He didn't suppress them or say, I'm not, I'm a prophet. I can't be asking Allah for something he didn't give me, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like, so kind of no, he, <laughs> he went to Allah and he said, I really want a child, right? And then, and then subhanAllah, Allah gave him. And Maryam, and um, uh, 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 Prophet Ibrahim, like there's so many stories of struggle in there, if you think about it, yeah. right? Yeah. Prophet Ibrahim with his dad. So that's for another live, inshallah. We can summarize who to tell you, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Thank you for this point. Uh, thank you. Anything else? Okay. Last, thank you. last thoughts, inshallah? Um. No, I think we covered it all. I think, yeah, just remember self-compassion is not self-pity. It doesn't mean that you're letting yourself off the hook. It just means that you're essentially you're recognizing your humanity. You're just recognizing your humanness and that we're not perfect and that we're not expected to be perfect. And that after that, I can get up and I can try better and do better and yani, carry on, inshallah. So thank you. Thank you, Melissa. That's very kind of you. And thank you to everyone who uh, who gave, um, who supported this. May Allah bless you. Inshallah. Um, inshallah. Um, um, okay. Um, do you want to do, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was just wondering if you want to end the, the live with Surat Al-Asr. So, um, yes. usually like at the end of any gathering, it's, of remembrance, it's recommended to end with Surah Al-Asr in that way. Inshallah, we all leave forgiven. Inshallah. So there's another bonus to attending the live. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. And I, and, and, Inshallah, I can meet you out also too. Please, Probably. yes, that would be lovely. Thank you. Who, there's people dialing in from the UK. and My Thank God. you for wherever you're coming from. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. 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 Do you want to do the wat first or it's Nasr first? I'll read Surah Al-Asr. <laughs> Okay. Uh, before no, you can do dua. No, no. Yeah, you. you oh, you want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Sure, you do dua first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then you'll end with Asad. Okay. Sure. <laughs> if you really need me to. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're good. Right, uh, I have this. Uh, the dua that I'm about to make. I have it. If you are interested in it, in um, on YouTube and on my IGTV, it's called um, supplications of the heart. I believe. Um. So I yes. have, and I have it in in the um. IGTV you can find it inshallah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Allah, you are the most compassionate. Ya Allah, allow every breath we take to be in service to you and make every night we sleep a rest to be better worshippers to you. 
and let every sense we use be used in all that pleases you and help us acknowledge the blessings that you've given us to be more grateful to you and utilize our existence to plant seeds that speak of your mercy and use our voice to bridge people back to you and use our tongues as a tool to remember you. Allow our eyes to see your mercy in every fall we stumble, to see your subtlety in every sudden circumstance and to see your vast ability in every dark tunnel. Ya Allah, when we are weak, help us see your strength. And when we're alone, help us see your companionship. And when we're hurt, help us see your wholeness. And when we're poor, help us see your richness. And when we're stuck, help us see your vastness. Ya Allah, allow every mistake we make to follow with a sincere repentance. And give us the ability to see the wisdom in your withholding. Ya Allah, bring us closer to all things you love. Allow our heart to beat in praises of you. Ya Allah, fill our emptiness for you are the fulfiller. Mend our brokenness for you are the mender. Light up our darkness for you are the light of the heavens and the earth. Ya Allah, heal our every wound for you are the healer of us all. Do not let a day go by without us thanking you for your blessings. Do not let a night pass without us ending it in your praise. Ya Allah, help us be more self-compassionate by knowing you and by knowing your love for us. Ya Allah, innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. Ya Allah, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakwa khair, everyone. Jazakwa khair. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسرق الله خير Thank you everyone for joining us Thank you Samia for having me بسرق الله خير Thank you For bearing with me <laughs> No, no bearing Thank you so much Thank you for everything And thank you for picking the verse May Allah Ta'ala reward you Help us me be more self compassionate, <laughs> inshallah. Jazakallah khair for tuning in. Inshallah, we'll see you all next week. Assalamu alaikum. Take care, everyone. Assalamu alaikum.